Hi team, I hope you're all well. Today is the start of a new weekly reading vlog. It is Monday the 12th of April. My brain wanted to say September and I've got no fucking idea why. It's the 12th of April. Um, and this week I wanna do something a little bit differently. We are gonna be doing a themed weekly reading vlog, which you will have already seen the title for. And this week I am gonna be reading books surrounding motor racing, so not just car racing but also um motorcycle racing as well because there is an f1 race coming up this weekend and if you know me you will know that i am into my f1 like heavily into my f1 it's been three weeks since there's been a race it will have been by the week by the time the weekend comes and it's been the longest wait ever um so i'm really excited about the f1 race coming up this week and i am hyped and i have a couple of books on my Bookopoly TBR that involve racing. So F1 racing in one of them and then not necessarily racing in the other one, but it's an MC book, um, like a MC romance, motorcycle club romance. So kind of, but not. Some of these books will be about racing, some of them won't be. So for example, the MC book isn't necessarily about racing, but it involves motorcycles because it's a motorcycle club book. So we're just going to go with it and make it work. So I've gone through my shelves to see what other books I can make fit and I've managed to find a couple and I'm really, really excited about it. So the first book that's on my actual Bookopoly TBR that is an F1 book is Chasing Daisy by Paige Tune. I bet none of you expected that, did you? Um, this is a F1 book following a young girl called Daisy Rogers who's in love. She's in love with her famous ex who is an F1 driver. He's called William Trust and uh, he has a girlfriend. Uh, but she's constantly with him because she is one of the um, hospitality girls at the Grand Prix and she ends up obviously going round with William to all of the races and they are together all the time and I think this is a romance between them two maybe uh, like a second chance romance possibly uh, but it's got F1 driving in it so I'm really really excited I've heard great things about this one so I am hyped to pick this one up it should be a good time. So I'm looking forward to this one. And then the other one that I have on my TBR, it, the motorcycle MC book is Malcolm by Lane Hart and DB West. I don't own it, I'll show a picture of it here. I have this on my Kindle, so I'm looking forward to this one. I picked it up because I had Kindle Unlimited come up on the board and I wanted something short but sweet and I had this on my uh, Kindle Unlimited for ages. So, um, and I've just read an MC romance and I've really, really enjoyed it. So I wanna pick another one up. So I'm looking forward to this one. It should be a good one and I am excited for it um so yeah i have those two which are on my book copy tbr and then the other books that i've decided to pick up for this uh one of them is actually by an f1 driver that i used to watch years and years ago he's retired now but he he does a lot of like the interviews and things like that he works for sky now and i think he's gone back into racing but i think a different type of racing now so i'm not sure but this is a, a older one but this is how to be an f1 driver by jensen button show a picture of it here jensen used to be one of my favorite drivers of all time when he was driving and i'm sure he used to be teamed up with lewis hamilton before lewis became teamed up with nico rosberg so i'm fairly certain that's the way around it went if i'm wrong about that i will put a note here but if i'm not then awesome um but yeah i'm looking forward to listening to that i have that on audio i have that then i also have a graphic novel um from net galley which i just got called michael valiant in the name of the sun and this is an f1 graphic novel which i thought was apt it sounds really really good i think this graphic novel has been done before but this is a new version of it and it came out on the 24th of march so i've managed to get it from uh, net galley and i'm really really excited about picking this one up um, and then another book that's featuring f1 is a romance one called fast and hard naturally by cat ransom and i'm looking forward to this one steamy f1 <laughs> this is going in a bit of a different direction but you know what i'm here for it and i'm excited um so yeah looking forward to picking this one up obviously it is a little bit shorter but it is tall as far as a uh, book is concerned because it is an indie published um, so i have that one and then i do have another graphic novel which is most crush volume two which is the second obviously in the most crush series and this is uh super bike racing so 
I'm looking forward to this one. It's I've really enjoyed the first one, so I'm looking forward to the second one. Um, so yeah, looking forward to picking this one up. So that seemed a little bit messy because some of them I own, some of them I don't. Overall, I have six books to read this week. I will show the covers of the others here. So I have these three plus these three. That is my TBR for this week. Overall, I'm hoping to get a lot of my reading done in the week so that I can um, spend the weekend watching the qualifying on Saturday and then the race on Sunday. I don't think I will watch the practice on Friday unless I just have it on as background noise while I'm reading. But we'll see, that's my plan. Now I need to go and edit last week's reading vlog and get that done. I will check back in with you when I have an update for you. But yes, this week I am hyped to be reading these books. I'm glad I've managed to find so many that will fit what I'm looking for this week as well. So, excited. Um, and I shall check back in with you when I have something to update you on. It's currently five past one on Tuesday morning, early hours of Tuesday morning. Um, I have been sat reading for a few hours, I say a few hours, I've been sat reading since about half seven. Um, and I've managed to complete many, many things. So the first thing that I read was Motor Crush Volume 2. I was holding up Motor Crush Volume 1 this morning because I'm an idiot. Motor Crush Volume 2, which I really, really enjoyed. This follows Dom, who is a... Um, like Superbike Racer, the Grand Prix for Superbikes. That's essentially what she does. And she works at the garage with her dad who is um, disabled. He has a prosthetic leg uh, due to an accident that in the first graphic novel we don't know about. We actually find out what happens in this one. Um, and in the first graphic novel, we come across her, um, coming across this drug called Crush, which she, doesn't realize exactly what it does and she's trying to find out exactly what it does and also win this grand prix and things like that there's lots going on lots of motorcycle racing lots of drugs lots of gangster stuff it's great i really enjoy it i have a great time with it so this is the second one and i really enjoyed the story of this one i cannot wait for the third one but strangely enough i think this came out in 2018 yeah 2018 so i don't know where the third one is but i need it immediately um but this was really really good so i gave it four stars really enjoyed where the story went excited to continue on with this story and see what more will come out of this then i read the i think it's michael valiant or valiant i don't know how you pronounce it i'll show a picture of it here this is originally french graphic novel um but it's now been translated into english i think that's the way around it's gone anyway um and this is following michael valian and his family who are uh basically run like a car manufacturing company and they want to get into f1 uh so they start off in some other races first like nascar and things like that but they want to get into f1 that's like their end goal and stuff um michael Michael's son is in Switzerland at a private school, like top-notch private school, and his son is a bit of a rebel. And basically, I enjoyed the F1 side of things, but the following his family and his rebel son, I was not a fan of. I was a little bit bored. Um, so, yeah, wasn't a huge fan of this one. I ended up giving it two stars. It wasn't great. So, one of them things. However... I then picked up Fast and Hard. This reading vlog's going great already. Watch me fuck it all up as the week goes on. <laughs> I've been reading Fast and Hard by Kat Ransom, which is a story following Mallory and also Lennox. Mallory is a uh, PR person. She works in public relations and she's worked in previous sports over the years. She's American. She's worked in basketball, football, things like that. However, she's trying to get her foot in the door in F1 with Lennox, who is deemed the bad boy, playboy, bit of an asshole around the paddock guy in F1. Um, Lennox is Scottish. I'm really wishing that there was an audiobook for this in which we had a Scottish accent because this would be so much fun with that um however he doesn't like the thought of having a you know public relations person helping him out he calls her a nanny essentially and he's been very like vocal about what he thinks about what she looks like and things he's a bit of a pig he's a lot of a pig he's an asshole but we're getting to a point where we're getting to know him a bit more and we get both mallory's side of things and lennox's so this is told from two points of view so 
So we know Lennox's side of things partially. We're getting to know Lennox's side of things. We know Mallory's side of things, but these two don't know those sides of things about each other. And obviously they're getting to know the mist. It's very, very steamy. I am living for this. The sexual tension between these two is epic. Um, and I am living for this. Not only that, but we had a really, really nice chapter before where Lennox was racing. It was the first race of the Grand Prix and it was the Australian race, which is usually the case. It hasn't been so this year because the Australian race... Australian race has been pushed back till December this season so um it's really nice to sort of go through an entire well not an entire race because that would be a really fucking long book but go through like the epic parts of a race basically written down in a format that I read it all and I completely understand what's going on and I can picture every single lap happening in my head. It's just really, really nice to be able to understand that part of it. Like I assume quite a few people that pick this up might not know the F1 side of things as much as I do. Um, and they're here for the romance, which is top notch by the way. But I really enjoy the F1 side of things as well. It's put a huge smile on my face and I am living for this. This is awesome. I'm really excited. This, this is like part of a series and I'm really excited about it. I did mention before that this is a standalone, but I assume that means that we follow different characters in the next book. I'm hoping the next one's still F1. I hope it's not a different type of sport. But anyway, I'm now 99 pages into this and I'm absolutely loving it. This is great. I am obsessed. <laughs> it's riveting. Um, I'm having a really good time. I thought this was going to be like super trashy. It is a little bit. He is a pig and he was really, really annoying to start off with. But naturally, as you go through the story, you get to know him a bit more um, and you realise he's not as much of a pig as you thought he was. Um, but yeah, I'm having a great time with this. Really, really enjoying it. So excited to continue on with this tomorrow and then i'm hoping i might finish this tomorrow ashley's doing some patreon sprints tomorrow night so and i'm on with her and so is jade so i don't know maybe i might be able to finish it tomorrow night who knows i kind of want to go up and read a little bit more <laughs> i'm not ready to go to bed yet i want to read more um so i don't know we'll see what happens i might go up and read a couple more chapters it is like gone one o'clock now and i am at the parents tomorrow but I had a really long sleep last night though, like I slept for about 11 hours last night, so I'm not particularly tired, I am a little bit but not like knackered, so yeah, I think I'm going to carry on reading this for a little bit longer, but then when I finish this, I think I'm going to go on to Chasing Daisy because I'm really excited about this one, I've heard great things, um, and I don't think it will be a steamy, but I do think that Malcolm will be steamy and that's an MC one, but also do I want to break Chasing Daisy up? Do I want to break the F1 up with the MC? I do still have Jensen Button though, which I've ordered the physical book for because I would really like to follow along. I get the feeling there's going to be pictures in it and stuff. So I'd really like to follow along with that. But yeah, overall, really great evening tonight. Great start to the week um, to have finished two graphic novels and be part way through, not halfway through, but part way through like 100 pages into my next book, which is awesome. So um, yeah having a great time i'm gonna go to bed continue reading this for a little bit longer and i will check back in with you tomorrow i have no doubt good afternoon it is tuesday and it's currently 20 to 5 and um i thought i would come on give you a little bit of an update on reading not much has changed but also i have a parcel so thought we would open this i know what this is because I ordered it yesterday and it's all to do with this video so I'm really excited that I ordered this. I wasn't going to because I have the audiobook and I was just going to audiobook it but I really wanted a physical copy because I knew there would be pictures and stuff inside and it's Jensen Button How to Be an F1 Driver which is one of the books I'm planning on reading this week and I was correct there are pictures inside which um, I want to be able to see. Um, so yeah glad to have bought a physical copy of this one because uh, now it means I can follow along with the book, which is awesome. Oh nice, so you won't get that on the audiobook, will you? That's inside of the F1 cockpit. Uh, there's probably a lot changed since uh, this came out due to the fact that this came out in 2019. Oh, not that much will have changed then. A little bit will, but not that much. Nice. Um, so yeah, glad to have a physical copy of this one. Also, isn't he a handsome man? 
bloody lovely Jensen button. Um, and then fast and hard, I am still currently reading. I've been reading a little bit more this afternoon. Um, I'm now on page 181. I am really, really loving this book. It's great. I'm really enjoying the re relationship between the two main characters and also the rivalry between our main character and also his teammate. Um, is a little intense but also understandably intense and I'm just really enjoying getting to know our main character as well um, Lennox he has a lot of stuff going on and, and has a lot of baggage as well yeah I'm really really enjoying this it's great absolutely awesome having a great time with it so I'm looking forward to continuing on with this tonight um, Ashley's hosting some sprints and myself and Jade are joining her so yeah looking forward to continuing on with this hopefully finish it tonight actually because I only have about um 80 pages left to go so should be easily done and then i will move on to something else so having a great time this week i had six books i wanted to read and i'm almost done with my third for the week um so that's awesome i am gonna go anyway i've got my tea in the oven and i'm gonna eat some food and catch up on a bit of booktube before we go live at seven o'clock so i will check back in with you later six and a half hours later hello hello i thought i would come and update you all now before i go up to bed um, i'm really really tired it's currently 20 past midnight and i'm gonna go up to bed i need to get harrison to the garage tomorrow morning first thing because uh, he has issues <laughs> and i'm tired of his shit um harrison be my car for those of you that don't know i just realized i said harrison without explaining that that's my car uh yes he is a ford focus um i finished fast and hard i nearly said fast and furious why fast and hard i mean it's similar um i finished fast and hard i gave this four stars it was really good there was a point in this where you know where there's always a section in a romance where the two end up having an argument about something because one of them lied about something and usually it's something that you can say you know like, it was annoying that you lied about that, but I get why you did it. I understand the reason why you did it. On occasion, you get one where you go, there was absolutely no need for you to lie about that. It would have been so much better for your entire situation, just to be honest about it. It was one of those, and it just annoyed me a little bit. So, um, that did pr knock it down a little bit on the rating, but overall, I really, really enjoyed this. Loved the characters, um, loved Lennox, and loved Mallory, and just really enjoyed the characters. Do be careful if you're picking this one up. Uh, be wary of... Um, I want to say definitely sexual assault actually like there's a guy in here that's an absolute fucking douchebag and really fucking handsy and just does not understand the word no at all he's a complete dickhead um so yeah just be careful of that abuse in here like sexual abuse a little bit of verbal abuse on that very toxic relationships in here as well relationships between teammates relationships between boss and employee um quite a few toxic relationships in here a little bit so may say that the actual main relationship in here is a little bit toxic but um i could see it for what it was and it you know ironed out a little bit maybe i don't know i really enjoyed it i gave it four out of five stars and i do really want to continue on with the series i think the next one in the series is called fast and wet <laughs> So we'll see what happens in that one. I, next book I have decided to pick up is Jensen Button, How to Become an F1, How to Be an F1 Driver even. Um, obviously, I unboxed this one earlier and I'm not that far in. I'm 12 pages in. I'm up to Monaco chapter. So yeah, uh, sorely disappointed to realise that this is not narrated by Jensen himself. Someone else has narrated it, but that's okay. Um, it's a British guy, which helps because Jensen is British. Um, so that's awesome. And yeah, I'm excited to read more about Jensen and find out what he's got to say for himself. This shouldn't take too long. I think the audio says I have about three and a half hours left and I'm listening to it on two point four speed i think so i could rank it up a little bit um if i want to so yeah shouldn't take me too much longer not too much longer shouldn't take me too long to read might get this finished tomorrow maybe if not thursday so that's awesome I'm really excited about the race this weekend so yeah the hype is starting on f1 twitter and on facebook and stuff so i am looking forward to it my family's excited and stuff so 
tight. Um, so I'm going to go to bed now because I'm shattered um, and I will check back in with you when I have something to update you on. Maybe tomorrow, maybe Thursday, we'll see. So yeah, check back in with you when I've got something to update you on. Hello, good afternoon. It's currently 25 past 12 on Friday afternoon. My apologies for my face. It's very uh, bad today. <laughs> My apologies, I'm not putting anything on it. I've just put a bit of moisturiser on it, but it's really, really sore. I might do a face mask later. But anyway, um, I wanted to give you a reading update. So I've just finished Jensen Button's How to Be an F1 Driver. I really enjoyed this. Not what I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be an autobiography by Jensen, but I believe he's already done one of those previously. And this is basically just a rundown of exactly how to be an F1 driver. So the type of person you've got to be, um, why it's so competitive, things like what kind of things you might eat in your diet. Um, it goes into, you know, sponsorships, having meetings with sponsors, things like that. It goes into a lot of detail surrounding generally being an F1 driver, but also bits of what Jensen did after he was an F1 driver as well and how his experience in F1 allowed him to be able to go into that as well. Really, really interesting. Really enjoyed it. I've given it four out of five stars. I do want to pick up his autobiography now though because I do think Jensen is fascinating. I completely forgot the scale of like how long he was in f1 the scale of it so so basically i used to watch i didn't watch it religiously but as a kid i've grown up with f1 being in my house like every sunday that the race was on i've grown up with it always being on always being in the background even if we're not necessarily paying attention my parents used to watch the start of the race the end of the race and kind of miss out the middle we would like fuck about whether we were playing games or my mom was making tea or whatever but it was always on in the background and I, so I've always grown up with F1, but I really got into it more once Lewis came in. And I hadn't realized, I obviously know the names, for example, like Michael Schumacher and Jensen Button and Felipe Massa and all of these racers, Fernando Alonso, who's now come back to F1, uh, Kimi Raikkonen, who's been in it a really long time. But I forget just how far, like how big Jensen's scope is. He's driven with the likes of Michael Schumacher, Fernando Alonso, Kimi Raikkonen, Felipe Massa, but he's also driven like Lewis was his teammate for a, a while and then he's driven with like Max Verstappen I think Max's maybe Max's first season was like Jensen's last season I can't remember fully when Jensen finished but his scale of driving he's only 10 years older than me he's 41 and I'm 31 and it's just his scale of driving but he was an F1 driver between the ages of 19 and 37 like that's a long time and I just hadn't realized how long of period of time that was and how many drivers he would have come across in that period of time fascinating very very fascinating really enjoyed it I think my dad's going to enjoy this one so I think I'm going to pass this on to him but yeah really good book four out of five stars um I did start Malcolm last night uh, by Lane Hart and I can't remember the name of the other author but I have DNF'd it. I got 19% in, decided to DNF it. This book is uh, disgusting, extremely vulgar, uh, just essentially tears into women and I was not happy with it. Basically we are following Malcolm who is the president of the Dirty Aces MC and uh, we are also following a woman whose name I can't even remember. That's how much I don't care about the story. Can't even remember. She's in a lot of trouble with her father and her father has basically brought her in to um, kind of spy on Malcolm and, you know, push information back to him, back to her dad. Uh, her options were to do that or basically she has to become a hooker, her dad is uh, making her do this because she stole something from him apparently and he's a bastard so uh to start off with i wasn't comfortable with that but then she went into the mc club and obviously she's got to try and get a job within the mc so that she can then spy on malcolm now to get a job within the mc these t these mcs are usually very tight knit it's not an easy thing just to walk in and get a job so she manages to get a job uh but the way that she does that is a sexual favor to one of the random guys that she's just met as she's walked into the bar which I also thought was disgusting. And then something else happens, like literally a couple pages later, Malcolm does something to her and I'm just not happy with the way the women are being treated in this book. I just don't like it. I think it's really, really degrading and just really disgusting and I just wasn't happy with it. And the minute I told Jade last night, she was like, is this written by a man? And I believe that it's written by uh, both a woman and a man. So I'm just 
not happy with it. I've DNF'd it 19% in, so we're not reading that anymore. So the final book for this reading vlog is Chasing Daisy by Paige Toon, which I'm really excited to pick up. This is a little bit chunky, but I've got the audiobook, which is around about 11 and a half hours, but I can listen to it on like up to three times speed. I'm not going to, but 2.5 speed probably because it's on script. So yeah, it shouldn't take me too long to get through this. Um, and this is what I'm going to be picking up next. So I'm really, really excited. This, I am hyped. So yeah, that's my plan now for the rest of the weekend. So yeah, next book, really excited. Had a great week this week, other than Malcolm, obviously, but so far having a good week i am hyped so i will check back in with you when i've got an update for you and i'll see you in a little bit hours later do we move it along i'm all out of time cards past four on Friday afternoon and I started reading Chasing Daisy. <laughs> You've just seen a clip, sorry that was Jade. You've just seen a clip previous to this one of me showing my broken lantern and Chasing Daisy on the floor. There is a reason for this. I threw Chasing Daisy across the room. <sighs> I've gotten 37 pages into this and I'm already frustrated. So to start off with, um, I mentioned to Jade, I was discussing it with her, she was like, how's it going? And I was like, mm, I'm not sure. Like, it's a dull, they've got swear, it's got swearing in it. I know it's a dull, like she's 26 years old, Daisy's 26 years old. So I'm aware it's adult, it is meant to be an adult book, but it just seems really juvenile. Like, I don't know, it just, she seems way younger. It just seems really juvenile. I don't know where this is going to go. I'm a little bit confused because I thought, and I've already explained this to you now, probably at least twice, I thought that Will Trust was Dave's, Daisy's ex-boyfriend and she had to follow him around the world because of her job. Um, but there was a second chance romance. That's what I thought. I am wrong and so wrong with that. Basically, Will Trust has a girlfriend, his childhood sweetheart girlfriend, Laura, and Daisy's interested in Will. So you can see where this is going and I'm not okay with it. Um, I then ended up finding myself on Goodreads because I undenied and undenied. I was like, I'm going to carry on with it. I'll, maybe it'll pick up and it'll be fine. But I still went on Goodreads and had a look. I do this sometimes when I'm struggling with a book and I'm not sure how I feel about it. I go through some of the reviews to see whether or not other people had similar feelings to me and see whether or not it picked up. So I've gone through some of the reviews and some of them are not <laughs> great reviews. Um, to start off with, it turns out that really you should be reading Paige Tunes books in a certain, not a certain order, but a lot of the characters cross over throughout her books. So they're not necessarily in a series, but quite a few of the characters cross over through her books. So as it turns out, I think that Daisy's ex-boyfriend is someone from a previous book that's been written prior to this one. I think I'm under that impression. So to start off with, I probably should have been reading these in a certain order. And the two books that come before this, I probably should have read before I pick this up i don't think it's necessary but maybe i'm missing things and i'm not fully sure i'm not picking up on certain things that maybe i should be um not only that but uh obviously you can see where this is going to go in relation to will and laura and then daisy as well um and just a couple of other things have been brought to light as well that i'm not that comfortable with reading about so i've made the decision to dnf this i'm really fucking sad because i've already dnf malcolm and i'm dnf in this and this has been on my radar for so long it's been recommended to me by so many people and i honestly thought i was gonna like this one but i'm just not a big fan of the writing style which is also a shame i'm not a fan of the writing style it seems really juvenile despite the fact that it is an adult i'm not a fan of some of the uh, tropes that are going to be in here and some of the triggers as well that I've seen on a couple of people's reviews so we're DNFing it really fucking sad obviously I yeeted it across the room because I got really mad at one point about what happens in here because I've read the spoiler reviews now then read the epilogue and I was like I cannot believe that fucking happens why does that happen why what is the point in this book so we're DNFing it I'm really fucking sad <laughs> um so I'm sad but also mad about the book in general, just really fucking mad that that's 
the train that we're on with that story. Am I blurry or is it me? I've rubbed my eyes. Um, so I am going to pick up another book instead and replace it because I this was one of the books on my 30 for 30 um 30 books in 30 days thing so i need to replace it with something else and i don't want to finish this vlog too early because obviously the race happens well qualifying happens tomorrow the race happens on sunday and i want to get clips of that because that's the whole point in the vlog so i'm going to replace it i've struggled to find like another book with kind of like f1 involved in it um so i'm just going to read the next one in the fast and hard series which is fast and wet show a picture of it here by Cat Ransom. I don't own it, obviously. It's going to be Kindle Unlimited pick. So, um, yeah, I'm going to pick that up instead. I did want to pick something that was uh, entirely different, but I'm struggling to find anything that's not another non-fiction book. So, um, we're just going to pick up Fast and Wet instead. My apologies for this. I was did not see this coming at all. I was, like, saving this in the hope that I might be saving, like, the best till last. Apparently not. So... We are where we are with it. Nevertheless, we will persevere. And I'm going to be picking up Fast and Wet. So I will give you an update on that when I have started it. I have no doubt that I will love it because I really enjoyed Fast and Hard. So I will check back in with you and I've got an update for you. A real tricky session for all the drivers as expected. No more so than George Russell. Here's some uh, unseen footage as he goes to the steering wheel. I think he's changing an engine mode on his first warm-up lap and that's the reason why the car went into the gravel. He I don't want to let you down It's the only thing I think about every morning You know my life ain't figured out But I promise if you stick around it'll never get boring We'll spend nights with cheap red wine Look at flats even though we can't afford them I don't want to let you down I don't want to lose you now Will you stay? Even when you wanna walk away When times get bad We can learn to love what we have In Italy before Who DNF'd in all three races in Italy last year And who wins the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix this Max. afternoon Max Verstappen for the first time in his career Takes victory in Italy And it was a victory by a long, long margin Hello, hello, it is Sunday evening now it's 20 to 7 in the evening i have obviously spent the day watching the f1 which was very interesting indeed as you may have seen i think i filmed the end where max came in first lewis came in second and lando came in third it was a great race twitchy bum time all the way through very interesting i was nervous from the off because Lewis in a Mercedes was surrounded by two Red Bulls with Perez in second and uh, Max in third. So he had zero backup from his teammate. Bottas was down in eighth. So I was a little bit nervous. And as it turns out, Max had a great start. So he ended up getting off straight into uh, first and just kept his place essentially pretty much all the way through. Uh, there was a split second where they swapped because of pit lane stops. But Max pretty much got it back straight away as soon as uh, Lewis pitted so 
very interesting race gutted about the george russell and uh, bottas crash still unsure as to whose fault that was but really gutted for george to be fair um he was doing great and he was probably going to end up finishing in points and i'm just gutted that he's not been able to have that opportunity today it's such a shame Bottas, I mean, to be fair, it says something that George was even fighting against Bottas. Like, that shouldn't be a situation that Bottas is in. Why is he fighting against a Williams and a Mercedes? Not great day for Bottas at all. Um, so, yeah, very, very interesting race. Lots going on. Great day. Lewis did amazing to uh, grapple back from P9 all the way through to P2. And Lando did awesome getting his 3P as well. So proud of him. Um, so yeah, really good race today. That probably meant zilch to the majority of you watching this right now that are here for the book content, not the F1 content, but whatever. Um, so yeah, really good day. Great race. It's just replaying the race for me now. Um, I've got it up muted because I've been reading fast and wet for a little bit. I'll show a picture of this cover here. Um, I really, really enjoy this series a lot. Cat Ransom has done a lot of research to write these books and I really enjoy that and respect that a lot. So you go into this from the titles, you would just assume that this is a really smutty F1 series that doesn't play too much on the F1 and plays more on the smut. It doesn't at all. Equal parts F1 and smut and I really, really enjoy that on the basis that I am a big F1 fan and I do enjoy the F1 side of things. Um, Overall, I'm really enjoying these books. Like I say, Cat seems to have done a great deal of research going into these books on f1 so that she can describe for example what the f1 cars look like properly what the paddock looks like properly um information surrounding the cars like this isn't just a case of there's a race great now there's a sex scene post race this is a case of going through the stages of a race so we've just had a situation in which our main characters in this book fast and wet are emily and cole and they basically had a romance when they were younger um back in the states and then cole was uh called off to go and race in f1 he moved to london and that's where he's been ever since racing uh however he didn't stay in contact with emily like he promised etc etc he ghosted her essentially and she's just gotten on with her life but forever been gutted about the fact that this relationship broke up and hung up on him basically and i don't think it helps that she has to see him constantly on tv and things like that so anyway she's um gone to uni she does engineering at uni and she's now gone into tire engineering management thing uh she did like a huge thesis on it and now she's looking for jobs etc uh, i am past this point but i don't want to spoil any more than this so uh we're continuing to follow emily and cole now we've got their backstory we know what happened previously we don't know fully why he ended up ghosting her i think it's a case well, we kind of do, but we're not fully sure why. There must be some more to it than what's going on. Um, however, we've just had a situation where Emily's ended up at one of the first races and she is sat on the pit wall, essentially, where there are um, computer screens and essentially there are like five seats and the engineers will sit there. Two of the people, two of the engineers will be an engineer for each driver and will relay information to the drivers while they relay any problems back to them for the cars or the weather, etc, etc. Uh, tire management etc and it turns out she's she's ended up sitting on the pit wall with one of the managers that day and it's just really really amazing how Kat has gotten this information and I don't know how she's gotten the information but the fact that she has managed to make it make sense to someone who enjoys F1 and can be like yeah okay that makes sense I think that's probably right I obviously don't know fully what goes on on the pit wall but I gen generally I know to some extent what's happening on the pit wall and it's just really really interesting to read it as an f1 fan i think a lot of people who aren't f1 fans or in a picking this series up for the smut might find those bits boring but i find them really interesting i just love that she's gone to the extent of finding this information out so she can put it in a book without this just being a case of there was a race someone won we had sex afterwards you know like it's a lot more interesting than that. There's a story behind it. We're getting more of Emily's character. We're getting more of Cole's character. We're getting to know these characters a little bit more. And the F1 comes into that massively. So I really enjoy it from that side of things. And I just kind of wanted to mention that. But I'm 63% in to fast and work now. And I'm having a great time with it. Am I going to finish it tonight? I'm not sure. But my aim is to try and do so. Um, but if I don't get it finished, I will finish it in next week's reading vlog. And you'll be able to find out my thoughts there. 
uh, but overall really enjoying it having a good time and again I've just made I I appreciated it in this but I think I've like really really appreciated it in fast and wet on the basis that I've gone into this assuming that it's just going to be you know really really smutty maybe not as good as the first one but I'm actually really really enjoying it it's really great and I just love seeing these women in um a position where they are in a job where you don't see many men so for example Emily's just mentioned that she's one of the only women in the paddock which um is you know tr true probably true she is probably one of the only women in the paddock when you see an f1 race there's, there's not many women that you see in the garages or in the paddock roaming around or anything you don't see very many women so um yeah it's great to kind of see that side of things and i'm really really enjoying it so i'm going to carry on with fast and wet once i've had some food and i will give you an update it might be tomorrow now when i wrap this up um and give you an update then but yeah so i shall chat to you then good morning team it is monday morning and we're gonna wrap this reading vlog up um overall this has been a little bit of a roller coaster of a reading vlog i seem to have had some really good reads and then some not great reads and i'm a little bit bummed about it it set me back a little bit on my 30 books in 30 days challenge i'm really gonna have to work at it this week which is fine but um it's just set me back a little bit made me feel a bit blah about the whole thing so let's go through what i read and what i rated the books that were the plan this week for my reading vlog so the first one was michael valiant valiant i don't know how you pronounce this i'll show a picture of the cover here i wasn't a huge fan of this i thought that the actual i felt like the f1 was almost like a backstory and there was like a main story to it and i wasn't a huge fan of the main story i was a little bit bored so i gave this two stars um it was just fine <laughs> i wasn't a huge fan it was just fine so i gave it two stars then i read Moach crush volume two i really enjoy this graphic novel series the illustrations are beautiful and that's almost a completely dark page and i just have a really good time with this this is gorgeous um i gave this one four stars i gave the first one four stars as well and i can't wait to continue on with the series then i read fast and hard by cat ransom i gave this one four stars i really enjoyed this i really enjoyed that it wasn't again like i had with the kings of kearney which was a romance mc it wasn't just like a smutty you know sexy romance mc there was more to it there was a backstory to it and what i really enjoyed about this was that the backstory was f1 and i really enjoyed the detail that cat goes into i think i mentioned yesterday that she must have done some decent research to write this series um so yeah really enjoyed this one it gave it four out of five stars then i read jensen button how to be an f1 driver again i gave this one four out of five stars um i really enjoyed this very very informative i definitely want to pick up jensen's autobiography now i am aware that he has written one just not sure how old it is um so this will obviously be a lot more current than his autobiography but that will probably go into less detail specifically about um f1 you know and driving the car what it's like to literally be an f1 driver that will probably be more to do with his actual personal experience rather than general experience of being an f1 driver but overall really enjoyed this very very informative really enjoyed it then i went on to malcolm which i dnf'd because i didn't like the behavior of some of the characters i just thought it was really really disgusting and degrading for women um and i wasn't interested in continuing on with that book after 19 percent, so i dnf'd it and then i picked up chasing daisy by page two which i also dnf'd um i dnf this about i can't remember how far in i was maybe 60 odd pages i dnf this just wasn't i just felt it like it was quite juvenile um these this is supposed to be an adult romance i just felt like it was written quite juvenile and then i found a couple of things out that are going to happen later on in the book and i'm just not here for it so i dnf this one I wasn't feeling comfortable about reading it so we are where we are with it two dnfs 
and then I started to read Fast and Wet which is the second in this series the Fast and Hard series um, and I am currently 53% through that one so I am hoping to finish that one this week but I'm not going to finish it in this reading vlog but overall really really enjoying it could definitely tell you that it's going to be a four star book could be higher because I'm really enjoying the F1 side of it. It's going more into um, the technical side of things due to the fact that Emily is a tyre engineer and it's going more into the technical side of things. It's very interesting, super informative. So yeah, really enjoying that one. So overall, a reasonable reading weekend. I did manage to finish four books and get halfway through a second one, but we did have uh, a second one. I did manage to finish four books, but get halfway through a fifth one. Um, but I did have two DNFs as well. So overall, not too bad, but it could have been better. Um, I'm feeling a little bit indifferent about it, but we are where we are with it. Um, I'm glad that the Imola Grand Prix was interesting and had lots going on and I cannot wait for the next one. It's going to be two weeks till the next race now. So, but overall that was me reading motorsports books in general. <laughs> um, I hope you have enjoyed this reading vlog. Do let me know in the comments down below if you've got any more books that have that feature F1. I do have some thriller ones by Toby Vincent that I want to get to at some point. It's just that they're so chunky. I didn't pick them up in this in this video. Um, but yeah, do let me know in the comments down below if you've got any other recommendations. And I shall see you next time. Bye for now.